Hi, it's Mark Collier with the OpenStack Foundation, and today we're going to talk a little bit about OpenStack and the trademark and the logo and the various um, marketing assets and some of the marketing programs that uh, are available to commercial companies as well as some of the uh, rules of the road if you want to use the OpenStack trademark in a non-commercial setting. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm Sparky Collier, and with that, I will give you my very short disclaimer, which is that um, this presentation is intended to really kind of address some of the frequently asked questions about the trademark, the policy, some of the licensing programs. If you really want to get into every detail, of course, you need to go to the website and read the policies and the license agreements that are posted there. Um, you can also contact logo at openstack.org. So this is not a substitute for reading every word of the agreements, but uh, hopefully it's a pretty good start. So why are people interested in the OpenStack trademark and in talking about OpenStack? Well, first of all, there's a ton of interest in OpenStack. If you see over time, it's been growing. This is using Google Trends. So lots and lots of people are interested in learning about OpenStack and uh, deploying OpenStack, using it, potentially you know, buying different types of OpenStack products and services. And that interest is very global. So we see all over the world, um, lots of user groups popping up. There's over 40 user groups now all over the world. So very exciting um, to see all this interest. And there's a large ecosystem of companies. Um, here are just a few of them that have uh, started to build products and services and actually deliver those to the market that are based on OpenStack or compatible with OpenStack. And so with all this interest and all this activity, we do have the potential for there to be confusion in the market. And so when we design the trademark policy, the idea here is to really, um, first of all, make it easy for people in the community to understand and use, you know, understand how to use the OpenStack um, trademark or the OpenStack marks um, the right way and to have policies there for the occasional um, bad actors. And then when it comes to the products that are based on OpenStack or compatible with OpenStack, we want to really try to be clear and communicate clearly and help people identify these OpenStack products or OpenStack uh, powered products in the market, sort of know what to expect when they when they uh, purchase those and install them, deploy them, you know, base a cloud on products that, that have the OpenStack name. And so with so many different people involved, it is important to, to have some clear um, communication around it. So the primary logo is the one you've probably seen the most often here on the screen. And, um, you know, this is really widely available for uh, non-commercial use. And so if you're organizing a user group meetup, you're talking about um, OpenStack on your blog and you're you know, talking about a meetup that you attended or some code that you contributed. It's not really connected to a specific product, so it's really just um, evangelizing OpenStack or your participation in it um, as a member of the community, then it's absolutely okay to use the logo and we would encourage you to do that. Um, and we've tried, because we do get questions on this quite a bit, in the policy itself to give a few examples of things that are allowed so that people don't feel like they're going to get caught up um, inadvertently, you know, by violating that policy. But again, openstack.org slash brand is really um, always the best place to start if you're looking for those resources to kind of check. Or you can email us logo at openstack.org. So um, a lot of what I want to talk about today is really geared towards people that have OpenStack related products. And so for those commercial um, situations, we've created some co-marketing programs that include licenses to um, specific logos um, that are designed to be easily identifiable and um, really uh, also provide um, guidelines for how the word OpenStack can be used when it comes to the name of, name of your product. And so before I dive into those um, in detail, let me just give you a quick um, example of some do's and don'ts. Um, when you're thinking about, you know, both the commercial and non-commercial use, you're basically just looking for uh, uh, 
some examples perhaps of what you, what is and is not allowed under these policies. So certainly we want um, companies to talk about OpenStack and there are appropriate ways to do that depending on if you're marketing your product as product marketing or if you're actually just talking about your community involvement. So that would be an example of a do. So two thumbs up there. Um, an example of a don't would be uh, registering domain names that have OpenStack or social media handles that have the word OpenStack in it. Um, another example would be when you're talking about your product and you're doing you know, outbound marketing or you know, product marketing, um, we ask that you use the uh, official OpenStack names if you're talking about the components or, or projects, if you will, within OpenStack, such as OpenStack Object Storage or OpenStack Networking, as opposed to the project code names. Um, that is also something to keep in mind. Um, other things to uh, to do and don't uh, do again. Open email us at, or check the website if you're not sure. Um, you know, just taking a random guess probably not the best way to get the right answer. Um, buying um, keywords is also something that, if you look at the policy, um, is not allowed under the the trademark policy on the website. For example, Google keywords. So, you know, these are some frequently asked questions we see. Um, we again just want you to contact us, check out the assets on the site, and I'll show you in a bit, a little bit, uh, exactly you know how easy it is to find the different information that you may find. But getting back to the family of logos for product marketing, so these are for commercial use, and you'll see that there's um, uh, a number of different programs here. They all have a similar uh, look to them, you know, certainly uh, similar to the primary logo, but we tried to make it distinct enough so that as a customer out there, a user who's looking at uh, to, you know, purchase your product, perhaps they, they know, you know, what they're, uh, they can recognize these logos as being part of these um, commercially licensed programs. And so uh, within these five programs that I've um, shown you the logos for here, they kind of fall into two major buckets or two camps. One, on the left side, you have the programs that are specific to your product if it incorporates the OpenStack software. So if your software ships with OpenStack or it's a cloud that's powered by OpenStack, so you're, you're, you're actually using the, the, the software, then um, you know those would fall in these examples on the left. And those are products that incorporate the software uh, both compute and object storage, um, and we do ask that they be part of a, a recent releases. So one of the two most recent releases, or uh, you know, associated milestones for people that are on the cutting edge and doing the continuous deployment thing. And then, of course, exposing the OpenStack APIs is important. And this is all part of that setting expectations for customers when they see this incredible uh, number of choices out there for OpenStack power products from this diverse ecosystem. They can know what to expect when they see these logos. And then on the right side, um, this is the built for OpenStack logo. And that's really for everything else that doesn't use the software in, in the product. So maybe a, a management tool. We've also used this to date to kind of cover um, service businesses, so professional services training, and you know, in the future, there may be some other programs that um, that we can develop that are more specific to these these other types of businesses in the ecosystem, like training. But for right now, this is the the set of programs we have and kind of what they're targeted for. So hopefully, if you have one of these products or you're planning to launch one, you can uh, identify which of these is uh, the right one for you. Um, and it's probably fairly self-evident uh, as to what these different um, logos are for, but the OpenStack distribution is for a software distribution. So, you know, it's roughly analogous to a Linux uh, distribution that people are, are um, f familiar with. And in fact, um, many of the major Linux distributions are also distributing OpenStack. So the, we're very excited about that. Um, a OpenStack cloud, you know, that particular license program or marketing uh, program is for infrastructure as a service cloud that's powered by OpenStack. Um, and then the other two are really more uh, for converged type products. So the powered by OpenStack is for something that combines hardware and software as an appliance or a converged 
model. And then the storage powered by OpenStack is really for products that are just using the object storage component of OpenStack because that is a, uh, a, a piece of OpenStack that is very useful on its own. We do see a number of products out there that are just purely targeted at object storage um, to address that particular use case. And so we created a separate logo for that just to be clear that when you buy that OpenStack product, it's, it's really a storage oriented product. So there's no confusion. And then I mentioned before the built for OpenStack is for management tools. You know, maybe you have a piece of hardware that you've tested with OpenStack. It's designed to work with it, but you're not actually shipping OpenStack uh, with your product, but that's tested to work with it. So it's kind of a catch all for a lot of other different types of products and services, including again, professional services and training. So um, in this uh, slide, I just talk about a few of the other requirements that I think um, are important to know. And again, it's kind of goes back to the, the frequently asked questions that I'd like to try to address here so that um, you know before you pour over uh, the various legal agreements, kind of um, you know what some of the highlights are. So again, on the products that are incorporating OpenStack software, these particular license programs or marketing programs are available to any of the companies that are corporate sponsors or gold or platinum members of the foundation. And so if you're not one of those companies and you want to participate in this, you can certainly sign up um, at openstack.org slash join. Um, there is a one-year agreement that goes with these, these uh, different products, a licensing agreement. There's product naming guidelines and other details. And it's all, we also ask that you clearly state which components and versions you're using so that when a customer is comparing different OpenStack products, they're not confused. And what you'll see here in the middle is a, another, uh, really just kind of a mock-up for illustrative pur purposes, what uh, we lovingly call the nutrition label. And this is really just an example of how you might clearly state which component and versions you're using with your product. Um, this again is just a mock-up here for to kind of show you what, what we're thinking in terms of you know one way you could make that clear to, to users. And we use, of course, Grizzly is an example, uh, which is which is still in development, but uh, it gives you some idea of what we mean by you know letting customers know what to expect. And then um, on the built for OpenStack logo um, on the the far right, um, this one also um, has you know naming guidelines and the, and, the, and the license agreement associated with it. However, in this particular case, um, you're not required to be a corporate sponsor or gold or platinum member, and the reason for that was that. Uh, this is such a broad category and such a huge ecosystem of, of really anything in the IT world that might be targeted at the data center. We wanted to make that really accessible for um, just the, the whole um, variety of products that might want to interface or plug into OpenStack and, and not make that uh, too hard to get into. Um, and this slide here is really just a summary of all the information that we've um, reviewed, kind of shows you all the different commercial use programs side by side, a little bit of an eye chart, but um, you know, we want to make this uh, deck available. And if you're ever wanting to sort of have a one page cheat sheet, um, it does help because, you know, they're all quite similar looking, but there are some, you know, um, subtle differences in, in the way the product naming uh, rights work and so forth to have it all kind of side by side is helpful. And in terms of how you would participate, so first of all, you know, understanding which program is right for you. Um, if there is a program you're wanting to, to participate in that requires, uh, you know, being a, a corporate sponsor or a, a gold or platinum member of the foundation, then you can, again, see this URL here, make a note of it, openstack.org slash join. Um, you'll want to go in uh, to the website and actually sign the, the agreement. And then um, as you work to incorporate the, the logos associated with it in, into your product marketing following the various guidelines, we would love for you to actually contact us um, at the foundation to help with any marketing launch you may have or other product marketing type activities. Um, we think we can, we can help a lot of companies. We've done this quite effectively in the past. And if you are leading up to a launch and you want to, you know, not just, uh, you know, get the logos to be part of the program, but actually have our help in 
promoting your launch, we're, we're happy to do that. And, um, and then last but not least, um, I will leave you with these, these um, uh, URLs again, as well as um, letting you know that logo at openstack.org is a great place to just send your general questions. And then before I let you go, I'm actually going to show you the website I was just talking about, openstack.org slash brand. So as you can see, um, there's a lot of content here that sort of uh, describes um, the different programs. So you can see that there's um, information about the non-commercial use logo, the guidelines. Along the left-hand nav, we have the trademark policy itself, the event policy. So if you're wanting to throw an event, um, if you're one of the people that posts to the OpenStack blog, we've got a code of conduct there. And really, again, getting into more detail about these commercial use programs, I'll show you a little quickly how um, it works to actually sign the agreement right here online. So um, when you click through, you'll see the restricted use guidelines. So it's important to look at the trademark policy, the restricted use guidelines, and of course you're gonna read all of this um, before you click agree and continue. And then um, when you get to this point, you will see the agreement and we're using EchoSign. Many of you are probably familiar with EchoSign. We actually have recently been using it for the Summit sponsorship. So if you are um, if you have been a sponsor of our recent upcoming Summit, then you've probably seen this, and it's just very common electronic um, document signing service. And in this case, we've actually embedded it right here on the page. And so you'll go through, and in this case, um, we ask that you complete your product name or names associated with this license. Of course, there's lots of detail you want to read, and then you'll sign it. And it's great for us to be able to have that all online electronic. So with that, um, I will just note a couple of things. Once you've signed this agreement, it will need to be countersigned by the foundation. Um, you will also get an email from EchoSign that you need to um, confirm your email address if you're not if you've never used EchoSign before. Sometimes that trips people up. And then of course, uh, once the logo agreements are signed and countersigned, uh, we'll be in touch to actually give you access to the logos that you're looking for and to help you with your product launch if that's something you're looking for help with. So again, I'm Mark Collier. I am the COO of the OpenStack Foundation. And you can follow me on Twitter at Sparky Collier. Hope this was helpful. And when in doubt, check out our website. Thanks.